Welcome to the Oakland County Megacast. I'm Tyler Keith, welcoming you to our live five days a week look into all things Oakland County. Today, we'll be talking to artists, nonprofit leaders, healthcare officials, and more about topics important to people like you right here in Oakland County. Let's take a look at today's top headlines on our website at civiccentertv.com on our local news page. Our top story today is from the Detroit Free Press's Lily Altavena. Michigan schools are getting tens of thousands of dollars to change racist mascots to new non-racist as mascots what a concept michigan schools are getting tens of thousands of dollars to pay for everything from school uniforms to new logos painted on gymnasium floors in an effort to eliminate imagery that depicts racist stereotypes of indigenous people the native american heritage fund announced in june in june that it would grant a portion of four hundred and eighty thousand dollars to four school districts in the state chippewa hill school district hartford public schools lansing school district and the saranac community schools chippewa hills will receive fifty two thousand three hundred and seventy one dollars hartford one hundred and thirty four thousand two hundred and forty nine dollars lansing will receive eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars and saranac one hundred and thirty nine thousand three hundred and nineteen dollars the rest of the four hundred and eighty thousand dollars went to organizations for other indigenous related education projects the funds board decided that the grants and priority was given to mascot projects according to a news release Quote, if we fund the decommissioning of racist mascot imagery now, we will have more money in the future for proactive programs and curriculum programming, said Jamie Stuck, chairperson of the Native American Heritage Fund and chairperson uh, for the Nottawest Suppy Huron Band of the Potawatomi in a news release. The districts selected for funding are not the only districts rebranding. Districts across the state of Michigan over the past two years have contemplated changing mascots, logos, and chants that perpetuate harmful stereotypes about indigenous people, uh, some with the help of the previous year's NAHF grants. The money will be distributed in August. It will go directly to mascots and logo rebranding uh, efforts. Chippewa Hill School District in Central Michigan is working to change its warriors mascot from an image of a native american person to the image of a knight the district is also removing arrowhead imagery throughout the schools superintendent bob grover said the process began with a meeting in 2018 with the saginaw chippewa indian tribe of michigan at that meeting it became clear that this, the district's logo had the change quote the answer is yes we're going to change so we're not going to have big meetings to talk about that if you don't like that then i'm sorry but it's the right thing to do and closed quote grover said the decision was re has received little pushback from around the community. The imagery is offensive to many indigenous people. A study from the University of Michigan found that about half of respondents said they were offended by mascots and chief headdresses. Uh, headdresses and other depictions of Native Americans can be considered offensive because they often perpetuate harmful stereotypes of tribal members. Furthermore, not every tribe regards headdresses as tradition and headdresses are varying in style. Chippewa Hills received uh, $52,300 $71.20 to rebrand the, the district. Uh, the grant will help the district slowly phase out these items with the old imagery like uniforms and murals, but the process is still costly, he said. Quote, I found that to paint a whole gym is about $20,000. You don't think of that as being expensive, but it is, and close quote. Ali Alt, who's 21 and graduated from Saranac, uh, junior and senior high school in 2019 said that she believed the old mascot, the name of which is an offensive term used to describe skin color and considered by some indigenous people to be a slur, was dated. But people in the community have been vehemently opposed to changing the name. She said, quote, there was always a very strong sense of this is who we are as a community and this is what we will always be, and close quote, she said. But Alt believes the mascot needed to change, quote, it feels very regressive and like holding on to something that should be let go, she said. That full article with more supporting materials and information can be found on our website at civiccentertv.com on our local news page. Also making headlines there from the Detroit News, the Department of Natural Resources, or DNR, closed the Grand Haven State Park Beach over the weekend. Uh, after re reports of multiple fights. Fights at a West Michigan beach prompted authorities to close the area on the 4th of July. The Michigan Department of Natural Resources made the decision Monday afternoon for Grand Haven State Park after quote unquote multiple brawls at the, uh, the city's Department of Public Safety reported in a statement. There were no immediate reports of injuries or arrests uh, as of the time that this article was posted. Other details have not yet been released. DNR officials did not immediately respond 
to a request for information. The 48-acre state park is near Lake Michigan along the west side and the Grand River along the north side, according to its website. It includes a campground, an overnight lodge, a designated swimming beach, picnic areas, and a beach pavilion. Temperatures on Monday climbed into the 90s in West Michigan, so a lot of people were out at the beach. And unfortunately, a few people deciding to uh, engage in uh, non-friendly uh, activities closed the beach in Grand Haven. Hopefully that will be reopened soon and people will be on their best behavior this time. Finally, making headlines on our website at civiccentertv.com on our local news page from Bridge, Michigan's Julia Forrest, Michigan parks and beaches are improving access to visitors with disabilities. Good news. Across the state, there are 28 accessible beach parks, 31 accessible fishing spots, and only 34 accessible scenic viewpoints and trails. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about 2.3 million Michiganders have some kind of a disability. About 12% of adults in Michigan, one in eight, have a dis disability that affects their mobility. Last year, the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, announced a $250 million investment to update state parks, including updates to make parks more accessible, including uh, to Prominent Falls State Park in the Upper Peninsula. Those improvements range from wheelchair accessible trails and kayak launches to off-road electric wheelchairs that give the disabled access to beaches. There are about 400 track chairs now throughout the state of Michigan, according to Brian Wilkinson, a member of the Michigan Accessibility Advisory Council and owner of Michigan Track Chair. Track chairs are spread across 11 parks throughout the state. Wilkinson himself has benefited from track chairs since he was paralyzed almost 22 years ago. He said track chairs have allowed him to remain connected to the outdoors. Quote, the track chair gave me the ability to be in nature independently, which was a huge door opener in its and it's important to give people these outlets and closed quote. Patrick O'Hare, president of the Friends of the Ludington State Park on the shore of Lake Michigan said track chairs are giving those who are disabled quote, that sense of freedom and closed quote to explore and enjoy the park with everyone else. Quote, it's an opportunity to provide a mobility opportunity to let people get out in the park, O'Hare said, continuing on. Individuals that may never have been able to uh, to go to the park or individuals that have had some medical condition that is not allowing them to traverse the trails or get down to the beach, they're able to do so now, and close quote. Thomas Murphy, who has bilateral neuropa neuropathy, my apologies, bilateral neuropathy, was the first to use a track chair at Ludington State Park in late May, traveling more than 10 hours from Columbia, Tennessee in order to use it. Murphy said the experience, quote, was a real blast, and close quote, and that the track chairs would, quote, really open up some avenues of enjoyment for life of folks. For the last about 15 years, I've not been able to do anything like that, Murphy said, continuing on, quote, I was hoping to hear the ocean once again, or the waves again, and it kind of fulfilled that dream right there, end close quote. The state of Michigan has six state parks and recreation areas that have accessible kayak launches as well. These sites have a transfer bench and slide that enables participants to sit in and slide into the kayak. Jessica Stark, a recreational therapist at Interlochen State Park and a council member on the Accessibility Advisory Council has assisted in the efforts at Interlock and State Park to help those with disabilities enjoy kayaking. Stark recalled helping one woman who is, a, who is a quadriplegic with getting into the kayak launch and the woman yelling, this is freedom, and closed quote. Quote, she's out of the wheelchair, she's on the level playing field with everyone else around her, and closed quote, said Stark. Tom Jones, not that Tom Jones, another, mem but num another member of the council and president of the Michigan Operation Freedom Outdoors, got involved with the council and efforts to boost accessibility after he returned from war with a traumatic brain injury and saw that helping those with disabilities gain access access to the outdoors was, quote, opportunity to still serve, and closed quote. Jones said, quote, public land doesn't segregate. It's still your public land. I've flipped enough desks and I've done the work first and asked for permission later, so much that it's become a common practice to include the other able communities in those plans to boost accessibilities, accessibility, and closed quote. Jones said that he hopes the future of accessibility efforts focus on, quote, trying to get costs down and implementing activities at more parks in the state so that Michiganders do not have to travel long distances in order, to, in order to reach accessible outdoor activities. Jones said that he would like to see, quote, more inclusive, reserved opportunities for folks with health challenges that can't get out in the woods in November in Michigan when it's cold and harder for those in, th with disabilities to navigate and lower temperatures and snow. Our former Megacast guest, Ron Olson, Parks Chief for the Michigan Department 
of natural resources, that, that the state's efforts focus on incentivizing and implementing projects that go the, beyond the minimum standards set by the Americans with Disabilities Act when designing accessible spaces. Quote, we want everybody to have an inclusive experience so that people can enjoy the outdoors without having obstacles, and close quote, Olson said. That work means there will be even fewer experiences like Erin Burkhor suffered through in 1992 when her wheelchair was stuck on a non-accessible bridge. Quote, every accessibility improvement that is made in recreation or outdoors or the built environment serves all of us, said Cynthia Barker, uh, Aaron's mother, who said, quote, it's making the environment easier to use by everybody. Great story there from Bridge, Michigan, and tons of uh, of all other material linked in that article, including information on these parks that already have these accessibility measures in place so that if you uh, know someone who is, who is in need of greater accessibility and would like to explore the natural areas of Michigan this summer and in the fall and every season, they'll be able to do so. And, uh, and you as an Avery Pondy person or them as someone with a disability can check all that information out on a variety of websites. Those are linked from this article from Bridge, Michigan on a website, civiccentertv.com slash local hyphen news, as well as those ever helpful links to accurate and up-to-date information on COVID-19 from the Centers for Disease Control, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and the Oakland County Health Division. All of those are linked at the very top of our page on civiccentertv.com on our local news page. We have a great program ahead on this Tuesday edition of the Oakland County Megacast. Up next, I'll be joined by artist Kate Jones, and then at the bottom of the hour, we'll talk with Judy Richmond from the Jesher Human Services. That's all up next. You're watching and listening to the Oakland County Megacast. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. 
keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Welcome back to the Oakland County Megacast, our live daily one-hour show about all things Oakland County. I'm Tyler Keith. Learn more about the program on our website at civiccentertv.com on our Megacast link, where you'll find information on our entire network of stations, including My Michigan TV. Joining us now on the program is Kate Jones. Kate is one of numerous artists that you will find at this year's Orchard Lake Fine Art Show in West Bloomfield on July 30th and 31st, and she joins us now on the Megacast. Kate, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you on. So first off, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and the arts that you make and will be showing at this year's Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Well, I have been making puzzles, very special kind of puzzles. They're geometric pieces. Did you, would you like to see one of them? Sure, absolutely. Here's an example of something that's very colorful and geometric. I've been making these since 1979. That's half my life. And uh, what jo makes me have so much joy is that I see how people love them. And they, uh, I came across them, I'm trying to make this a very short story. I came across them because I read about a certain special set of geometric pieces in a science fiction book. And I became so fascinated by the concept that, um, well, here's, here's that set of pieces. I don't know if you can see that they're individual sh shaped wooden yes. blocks. You can see how they look like different pieces. And they will fit together. Most people think of puzzles in terms of um, jigsaw puzzles, that you make one thing out of them. Sure. But in, in this case, there are thousands of different ways you can combine the pieces to make different arrangements. You can even put them together three-dimensionally. See, they fit very precisely. So there are numerous different kinds of puzzles that you can make out of these puzzles. It's not just a one-size-fits-all experience, and that goes for every single one of these. That's right, that's right. What got you into this, Kay? What, when, did you start, uh, when did you start with this particular form of art, and what really made this so fascinating to you? Well, Back, way back when in past history, I happened to be in Iran, Persia, Iran, yeah. before their revolution, 1975. And that is where I came across this book that talked about puzzles. Now, before that, I have been a graphic artist for many years. I, that was my original profession, was a graphic artist, editor, writer, and so forth. And so when I came across these shapes in a book, I became so fascinated. And in the meanwhile, because we were sent to Iran for three or four years, my graphic arts business in Virginia was in the care of someone else. And eventually I sold it to them. So when we were uh, brought out on a three days notice because the revolution was starting, so they brought all the Americans home, yeah. three days notice, uh, we were home and I said, well, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? And I've been so involved working with these pieces that my American friends in Shiraz also became fascinated. And they said, well, why don't we start a new business? Just start a business, make these puzzles. And that's where it all started, 1979. And um, in the process of learning what to do as a business, my first thought was, well, everything we make would be sold to stores and the stores would sell it to the public. 
And that didn't work out because these are handmade. They're incredibly beautiful quality, fine hand finished wood. My other things are acrylic, beautiful stained glass looking things. And stores didn't understand what I was doing. So I suddenly realized if I go to an art show and put out my display and people can come and see them and talk about them and understand them and try them out, that was the best way for me to find customers for my usual, unusual work. This is very unusual. I'm the only one who does this. Yeah, it is very unusual. It's unique. And and I and I go back to what you said about these puzzles being so malleable. There, there's so many different shapes and so many different end, end designs that you can get to when making these puzzles. There's not that one size fits all. You get the box and you see, okay, this is what the puzzle is supposed to look like. When you're done with it, you shuffle all the pieces around, you put it back together. You have so many different ways that you can put this puzzle together to make whatever ultimate end goal it is. How do you come up with these? How do you, what goes into designing these puzzles and ultimately making them so that they can fit what your vision is of them and potentially what someone else's vision might be of them? Well, that's a wonderful question. Thank you for asking it that way. Uh, I discovered that because my original wooden set had 12, 12 different shapes, we can see them here a little bit better. The 12 shapes are all different. And what they represent is all the possible ways that you can put five squares together. Now five squares have these 12 ways. That's the whole family. That is the entire clan of, of the pieces that belong to that concept. So now that got me started on looking at other shapes. My second puzzle made of circles. Now this is my own invention. I didn't invent the original 12 pentominoes. These are my own invention. These are made of circles, size one, two, three, and little bridges between them. So the geometric uh, unity was very satisfying. And I found that it would go together to make beautiful patterns. So I will sit and work. Sometimes one puzzle to develop one puzzle may take me five years because I have to do all the research. I have to figure out what all can they do. And now here's another one. This is a small one, but very difficult because every piece is a different shape made of six triangles. So if you look at them, you see there's one piece that's the hexagon. Yeah. That's made of six triangles, but so are all the others. Well, this, I decided it should have three colors. In researching these puzzles, I fell into something called recreational mathematics. Now, I try to not use the word mathematics too often because it still scares people. <laughs> but it is the simplest kind of mathematics, the kind that anyone can do. A child can do this. This one is a little hard for children. The first one I showed you is ideal for as young as four years old. And yet there are complex challenges for this that even a math professor will have a hard time sorting out. So it's the tremendous variety of ways. You can't do them wrong. This is one of the things I have to keep telling people. There are no wrong answers. Enjoy the process of finding and enjoy creating your own new things with it. It isn't just what I have put in the book and said, do this, do this, do this. No, you get to discover all your own wonderful ideas as well. So it's creative. Yeah, and that's what I love about this, Kate, is, is, uh, and you. about these puzzles is because, they, like you said, you're able to create your own creation out of it. You are putting together a puzzle. You're, you're solving this brain teaser, which is what puzzles inherently are, but doing it in a way that also taps into your own creativity. And ultimately, your goal isn't to find the solution. Your goal is to find a solution. And maybe it's similar for a lot of people or it's different for a lot of people. That's all in the beauty of creating this art and allowing people to interact with it in the way that they do. And so for you, 
Uh, not only are you creating these puzzles, you have a bunch of other games that you're creating as well uh, through Caden Enterprises. More information can be found on all of those at gamepuzzles.com. What are some of the other products and, and other games uh, that you and, and your business has come up with and, and how do they kind of follow along the lines of these puzzles? Thank you, that's a wonderful question. It, I wish more people would ask me that, that's beautiful. Well, I have over 200 puzzles now that have evolved out of looking for shapes. Uh, back behind me, I don't know if you can see it or not, up there, mm -hmm. see that gi gigantic one up there? Yeah, yeah top right corner. Well, that is the advanced form of this first one I showed you. So this one is fine for even seven-year-olds. We, we, we have advanced, some things are more difficult to get into for young children, but ultimately I designed for grown-ups who can then teach it to their children step-by-step. Step. Starts with easy and gets more complex because that is how I visualize everything in the world, the way people invent things, the way people build things. Humans are the most amazing life form on earth because they have original thinking going on. And so uh, by having easy, medium, and advanced things, it gives everyone a chance to feel that satisfaction of having conquered it. And as I was saying, I sometimes spend five years to develop one of them. Now, one of the things that have happened, very lucky for me, I have a lot of friends who love what I do. And now they have come up with ideas that we can develop together. Yeah. Uh, I don't have here one to show you, but I also we also make game boards, beautiful wooden geometric game boards and pieces. And these are what's called abstract strategy. We don't do things like those exciting Euro games, if you know what I'm talking about, with yeah. 100,000 parts that you have to sort out cards and pieces. No. Our games are classic, and it requires creative thinking even in the strategies for those. Uh, when I started out back in 1979, 1980, I realized that there is a magazine called Games, Games Magazine, in those years, we're talking 40 years ago, mm -hmm. who used to write about games. They would review games. So when I sent them, my wooden set, just in case they would like to review it and get me some publicity. Well, they loved it. They gave me almost a whole page on this one. And then little by little, as the years went by, I would also send them a review copy. And that's how I found out that uh, I couldn't sell to stores. Stores could not do the explaining that it takes for us to demonstrate what we do. And so over the years, over 13 years or more, I was fortunate enough, honored enough, that the reviewers on Games Magazine gave me 52 mentions as being among the 100 best games either of the year or ever. <laughs> and so that was an incredible uh, satisfaction. So I, I don't have a set to show you, but the abstract concept is that they are pieces. And one of the things I have grown into as the years went by, when you compare the games out there in the world, I do not like to make games that require you to think of killing the other players' pieces sure. or capturing them or in other some ways harming them uh, symbolically. Obviously, uh, games that look like war, like chess is a regime change. You're trying to get rid of the other king. Yeah. Well, I'm, not, I, I'm sorry to have to say it this way, but I'm gonna tell you that all the people who love checkers don't realize that in checkers, you are trying to wipe out the entire population. Yeah. Now, what does that mean in real life when you do that? That's not very nice. But many of my games, you need to think through the strategy, what is the best move by which to get a result without necessarily trying to break the other guy's kneecaps. And sometimes I've lately come into some, th some strategies where you actually get to collaborate a little bit 
Yeah. You have to help them so it will help you. So maybe the other player has a piece you need for something, but you have a piece they need. Well, you can offer to trade. So you both gain. And then if everyone wins, that's really very nice too. More information on all of Kate's puzzles and games can be found on GamePuzzles.com. That's GamePuzzles.com. You can also see Kate at this year's Orchard Lake Fine Art Show in West Bloomfield on Powers and Daily Road just off of Orchard Lake on July 30th and 31st. And Kate Jones is with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Kate, uh, just a few more minutes with you. And so I want to ask, when people play your games, when they interact with your puzzles or with your game boards or with any form of your art and, and your games, what do you hope that people ultimately get out of this experience? <laughs> well, first they learn to recognize that this is something they want to own and they'll want to buy it for the family, for the friends, and they'll have it for years and years because the quality I make is a very permanent. It's very durable. And if for any reason, if ever let's a dog eats a piece or something, you're missing a piece, I have a lifetime guarantee that I will be able to make available to them replacement parts. But what I'm hoping is that they will wake up a part of the brain that loves to think, that loves to put things together, that loves to create beautiful things. This is really the these, what I call the soul of the universe because the universe has systems, everything works together in, in ways that we are still not fully understanding. But my puzzles are like little microcosms of universal principles, that things work well together. So we cooperate, uh, just like families take their, they help each other, see? So uh, when people come up to my booth, they will find there are sets open for them to play with. They are welcome to play with. And then I can explain what to do and let them try it. And I try to find something that's suitable for that person. I had a lot of years of problems, I have to tell you this, because the public had become resistant to puzzles because they couldn't do Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube gave me decades of struggle <laughs> to get people to want to love puzzles again because my puzzles are different. You can play with them in any way you like. There are medium and advanced, medium and advanced challenges for it. So anyone can play to the level that is the most pleasing for them. Kate, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you July 30th and 31st at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Nice to see you then if you come and see me. Thank you. Thank you for the visit. In the, you're welcome. In the meantime, you can keep up to date on everything that Kate and the team at Kate and Enterprises is making on GamePuzzles.com. That's GamePuzzles.com. Let's take a break on the Oakland County Megacast. On the other side, we'll talk about the Women to Work program with Jesher Family Services at the Oakland on the Oakland County Megacast. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. 
It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Welcome back to the Oakland County Megacast, our live daily one hour show about all things Oakland County. I'm Tyler Keeft. Learn more about the program by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com where you'll find information on all of our partnering stations and our entire network of the program, including My Michigan TV. Joining us now on the Megacast is Judy Richmond. She is the coordinator of the Women's Work Program at Jesser Family Services. Judy, thanks for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate having you on. So first off, can you give us some uh, background information on the Women to Work program and who it serves in uh, here in Michigan? Happy to do that. The Women to Work program is meeting in person, coming up with a whole new session starting next week on Thursday, July 14th. It is intended for women who often find very unexpectedly that they need to find employment as soon as possible. Often they have only worked part-time or have not worked for several years or due to the pandemic have worked <clears throat> very, very rarely within the last two or three years. Often the women are divorced, have a disabled partner or spouse, are separated and find that they need for obviously financial reasons to get back into the workforce as soon as possible. We meet for eight sessions, starting with the information meeting next week. And we meet in Southfield eight mornings from nine until 12 noon. So recently, uh, the, the two organizations, JVS Human Services and Kadima, had uh, uh, decided to merge their <laughs> services into one organization. They recently announced that that organization is now Je Jesser Family Services. Can you tell us about uh, that change and, uh, and why ultimately these two organizations decided to merge their, their, their organizations together, uh, at least to your knowledge? Well, good question. Um, as of this past January, the merger did take place between Kadima, which services people with mental illness, and with JVS, mostly helping people find jobs. And as a result of the merger, it was decided, let's come up with a whole new name. And so the name now is Gesher Human Services, and Gesher is a Hebrew word that means bridges. And the more discussion that took place, the more we realized that people cross many bridges, whether they are newly employed or perhaps receiving some psychological services to a certain extent, and they cross significant bridges in order to get to a new place and find success in their lives. So especially given the current circumstances of the workforce and, and of the world as the COVID-19 pandemic saw, so many people leave the workforce, especially women, mm -hmm. and now women looking to get back into the workforce. What are some of the special circumstances that women need to consider as they're entering the workforce and how does the Women to Work program help them navigate those challenges that may be out there at this time in the workforce? Well, it's no surprise that the pandemic has had an effect worldwide, obviously, and women are finding currently that it is most convenient for them perhaps to work remotely because they have children at home unexpectedly, not only preschoolers, but school-aged children. And so they are focusing on remote or hybrid possibilities. They also find that they need often to improve their computer skills 
and we do offer computer training in conjunction with the Women to Work program that will be starting again in the fall. So people can improve their computer skills, obviously, and it looks so good on the resume to show that people are in fact taking a class or recently have completed a class. And that opens lots of doors, regardless of the areas that people are focusing on. We're joined by Judy, Judy Richmond. She is the coordinator of the Women to Work program at Jessup Family Services. Judy uh, is with us on the program talking about the Women to Work program uh, today on the Megacast. And so right now, the economic situation, it's a little bit shaky for everybody, especially for businesses and for individuals that uh, have a little bit tighter of pockets of late due to uh, the world economy, but certainly inflation and other factors here in the U.S. How is that factoring in to the women re-entering the workforce and maybe creating more challenges or different things that they need to navigate? Well, another good question. And there has been a shift. Employers, perhaps it's not news to anybody, but employers are finding it a little more difficult to get good employees. And that's kind of music to our ears. So employers are connecting with us. They are willing to understand that women have not worked very recently because of COVID. And so they, of course, are very welcome to connect with us and to meet with our participants in order to fill those jobs that have recently been eliminated. And then uh, let's talk about the mental hurdles that women might need to be navigating at this time as they're going back into the work, as they're going back into the workforce. What are some of those impacts too? Because there's been so much pressure on women as they've left the workforce during the pandemic mm -hmm. to take care of their families or take care of other situations in their life that COVID-19 impacted. Those things don't just go away because the workforce is coming back or the work availability is coming back as the pandemic changes. So how is that also impacting these women? Well, you know, that is something that we can't ignore. And part of what we offer during our sessions is called stress management. And it allows people to recognize that they're not alone, that other people are going through similar circumstances. And we offer information on work-life balance, for example. We also offer sessions on financial capabilities so that if budgetary needs have changed, then we offer assistance in that regard. Also, the sessions include, for example, resume development and interviewing and active job search, goal setting, decision making, action plans, all of the things that really kind of come together in order for people to create and follow a realistic job search and find employment and find that they are successful in finding permanent employment. We're joined by Judy Richmond. She is the coordinator of the Women to Work program at Just Your Family Services. Joining us on the Megacast, more information can be found on jvshumanservices.com. That's jvshumanservices.org. My apologies, jvshumanservices.org for more information on the Women to Work program, including their new upcoming session that begins very soon. Again, jvshumanservices.org for more information on the Women to Work program. And Judy, before the pandemic, uh, in, in the workforce, there were a number of different issues that were facing women looking uh, looking for new jobs or looking to enter the workforce. Certainly, the pay gap uh, was a significant was a significant issue. Continues to be a significant issue, but other issues such as uh, such as maternity leave and other services are also still very much hotly debated at this time. Given the competitive nature of the workforce, have employers been more apt? of late to resolve those issues or to mitigate those issues that women might have or be concerned about going back into the workforce? Well, there's proof of that. In fact, if we look at job descriptions, for example, often the job descriptions will start by explaining what their benefits are. And that's one way that employers get more applicants. And the applicants certainly are very pleased and impressed that the employers are willing to be sometimes more flexible in terms of hours and maybe even so in terms of pay rate. 
And Judy, uh, th these are all such, this is all such great information and it, it's interesting to talk about it, but for these women that are looking to get back in the workforce, they're gonna have so many more questions that are much more personal and are much more mm -hmm. uh, aptly asked because they are experiencing this themselves. They are women looking to work and this is what the program is for. So for those that are interested in the Women to Work program and all these great services and great advice that is available to them, how can they sign up? How can they get involved and learn more about this? Okay, well, first I wanted to also add that I meet individually with the women as well, as often as needed, and we do an assessment in, the, in order for the women to decide exactly what job target they may have in mind, and so that is offered as well. Uh, we're joined by Judy Richmond. She is the coordinator of the Women to Work program at Gesture Family Services, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. Again, more information on uh, on these services, including the Women to Work program, can be found on jvshumanservices.org. jvshumanservices.org. Of course, Gesture Family Services is a merger between the JVS Human Services and Kadima. They are now Gesture Family Services and Judy uh, and Judy Richmond joins us on the Megacast to talk about the Women to Work program. So uh, this is something you can sign up for. You can take these classes. You can also get some further consultation. These women women can from you directly and others on your team. Uh, how long does this program last for and how often uh, does Women to Work ha uh, hold these sessions through Gesture Family Services? Okay, well, we meet in sessions for eight times. We meet Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 until 12 noon. And we also hold these programs at least three times per year. And anyone interested is welcome to call me directly. I love it when my phone rings for that purpose. And it's 248-233-4233. More information can be found on jvshumanservices.org. Here's how you get to the Women to Work webpage. Go to jvshumanservices.org. You scroll over their Who We Serve section and click on Women. That will bring up the page that has information that you need uh, you may be seeking about women entering the workforce. Certainly more information also on the Women to Work program can be found on their website, jvshumanservices.org. We're joined by Judy Richmond. She is the coordinator of the Women to Work program at Jesher Family Services, a merger between JVS and Kadima. Joining us on the Oakland County Megacast, Judy, not everybody is available from 9 a.m. until noon. They're getting the kids They're getting the kids to school. They have other affairs to, to uh, manage. Maybe they're even at work and they're, and they're going through this process to find a new job or, or put themselves on a new career path. If they're unable to attend these sessions from nine to noon, are they able to access them virtually or is there a virtual option? Well, the option is that I do meet with people individually as well. And often, just as you're saying, people are currently working for a part-time and looking to change direction. And so meeting with them individually is certainly not a problem in any way. And that's what makes this program so effective and so great is that it works for people in all different situations. In a group setting, you can learn more information, ask a lot of questions, connect with other women mm -hmm. uh, that are working out in the industry, or get that individual access as well, whatever fits your schedule. Judy, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, another few minutes with you before we need to say goodbye today. Anything else that we haven't discussed about the Women to Work program or other JVS and Kadima programs now under the umbrella of Gesture Family Services that may be benefiting women at this time? Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Appreciate having you on. Of course, you can learn more about the Women to Work program and other programs serving women and everyone else in the community at jvshumanservices.org. Judy, thank you very much. Thanks again. Appreciate it. We're going to take a break here on your radio homes for the Megacast. 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake and 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. When we come back on our entire network, we'll kick off the Michigan Megacast with Kat Golden, the founder of Nurses Inspire Nurses. We'll talk healthcare coming up next on the Michigan Megacast. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. 
Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. 
wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Welcome to the Michigan Megacast, our daily live one-hour show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keefe. To learn more about the program by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com and clicking on our Megacast link, where you'll find information on our entire network of stations, including our flagship, My Michigan TV. Learn more about My My at MyMyTV.com, M-Y-M-I-TV.com. You can also learn more about everywhere you can download their free smart TV and smartphone apps. Take My Michigan TV programming home with you and on the road all throughout Michigan and around the world with the My Michigan TV app for free on your smartphones and your smart TVs. Joining us now on the Michigan Megacast is Kat Golden. She is a registered nurse and the founder of Nurses Inspire Nurses. Kat, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate having you on. So first off, uh, what inspired you to go into the healthcare industry and particularly into nursing? I had a best friend that was got pregnant and her daughter was born with spina bifida. And so we both decided at that time to go back to nursing school so we could help take care of her. I was living in Colorado at the time and they have amazing programs for parents and family friends if they ha- are licensed and have a healthcare background to care for family members, um, you know, friends of family, et cetera. So That was how I got into nursing, and I always worked in pediatrics. And then at Children's Hospital in Michigan, I moved back to the metro area. So I worked at Children's Hospital in Michigan. So nursing is uh, obviously a very tough industry. It's very tough to work in healthcare, especially it has been over the past few years with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, And part of that was an inspiration to the the rigors of this industry. Working in healthcare, whether you are a nurse or not a nurse, helped helped to inspire you to find Nurses Inspire Nurses. Can you tell us about the organization and what prompted you to find this organization? Yeah, I started it in 2018, and really, I never intended to have a business. I just wanted to support my coworkers, and I really was confused why more people weren't supporting nurses or why there weren't more resources or why we didn't feel comfortable talking to each other and saying, you know, hey, I need help, I need support, I'm having a rough day, whatever it is. Um, You know, nurses are helpers, right? We're so busy helping not only our patients, but everyone else in our life. And I just believe so strongly that in order to be successful in the profession long term, we had to support each other. And so really, I just started doing little things for my coworkers um, to make our days better. And it led me to ultimately having a party uh, to support nurses. And I I said, only nurses can come. I I got these crazy swag bags. I went to Trader Joe's, just got some wine. I'm like, it'll be be great. Um, And I put Nurses Inspire Nurses on a t-shirt on a whim. And it really took off. And, and, you know, it it was a lot of hard work and a little luck. And nothing was taken. There was no website, no trademark, no hashtags. And everyone was really into it. And so I was like, I guess I'm going to do this. So it goes way beyond just a party at this point. Oh, yeah. Nurses and and celebrating nurses and nurses celebrating nurses. There are so many different services and so many different events that uh, that you hold through this organization every year to support our healthcare workers. Can you tell us about some of those services that are aimed at helping nurses deal with the day-to-day rigors and stresses that come from working in this industry? 
Yeah, the number one thing that we really do is provide a safe community and a safe place to be yourself. We have a large online community and a free app, so nurses can hop into the app anytime, 24-7, as we know, nurses work crazy hours, and it's always just a safe place to celebrate yourself, to laugh, to cry, to ask any question, um, so that's the number one, and then we do, we have a lot of resources through that, um, free events, we have a free book club, um, really just provide connection no one understands nursing like nurses so we really want to create community and connection we do that through our online app and then we have uh, in-person and virtual meetups uh, we have a, a meetup next week that we'll host over zoom just to ask questions called community conversations just talking about what's going on in the world um, how we can best support and then we actually go to organizations we were just at uh, Henry Ford downtown two weeks ago throwing nurse appreciation parties and just really celebrating staff Staff, helping hospitals do that, helping them celebrate their staff. And um, yeah, we have our big nurse give back night party coming up. Um, we've been all over the country. We did a fall tour last year, really just getting out and celebrating nurses and, and letting them know they're not alone. What's the reaction been like? What's the response been like from the nurses that have had interactions with others in this organization or through this organization? How has it helped them? Yeah, I think it's just really helped validate them and given them a safe place. And I believe help them have a lot of a lot of meaning and support outside of work, which has led them to being a lot happier at work. Um, you know, we see a lot of our nurses now advocating for themselves, expressing what they need, taking time to do things outside of work that bring them joy. We're having a community meetup. Uh, we're doing the Handlebar Detroit downtown um, a week from Sunday and just really allowing them to have fun and connect with other people that get it. And it's, you know, made all the difference. They tell us it's changed their life and, that's what keeps me going every day. Just how important of an element is it to have that interaction with people that have been there and have done that or are in the throes of working as a nurse in a variety of different capacities? How does just having that supportive voice, but a supporting voice that knows what you're going through, how does that help these nurses really better progress in coping with the stresses that come from being a nurse? Yeah, I think it's everything. And I think, you know, as because we care so deeply as nurses for people, we expect that everyone else in our life is gonna is gonna understand and be there for us. And and really they can't, you know, your roommate, your partner, your family, they, they do, truly don't understand what it's like. And so there's just such strong validation and that sense of community and belonging when we can connect with each other and be very honest about, you know, where we're at. And it's also provided so many ideas and ways to grow as a human and in your career. You know, in our, our community app, so many conversations like, what did you say when this happened? Have you dealt with this? Um, you know, how much PTO are you getting? How did you advocate for yourself? Just, you know, other people that get it. So the, the feeling that our nurses get from being with us is really amazing. Um, it's a little intangible. So I wish I could, I wish I could give it a grade or, or a number, but we've had the same nurses in our community for years and years and, and growing every day. So I know it's working. We're joined by Kat Golden. She is a registered nurse and the founding, uh, the founder of Nurses Inspire Nurses, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. You can find more information on Nurses Inspire Nurses by visiting their website, nursesinspirenurses.com. That's Nurses Inspire Nurses. Dot com. Uh, one of the efforts on your website is Inspire a Nurse, and this isn't just for people that are nurses and are in the healthcare industry. It's for anybody that wants to help lift the spirits of nurses across the state of Michigan and around the world. Tell us about uh, this program and how people can help part can help actively participate in Nurses Inspire Nurses, even if they aren't healthcare worker themselves. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things. I love giving stuff away. I just want to be like Oprah and <laughs> giving all the stuff away. Um, so we send free gifts to nurses every month. We send 500 free gifts a month um, that nurses can claim on our website. And really the point is that we just give them something tangible. I want it to be a physical gift. We have uh, you know different partners that work with us um, every single month to make this possible, as well as you know our own company. We also include a handwritten note, and this is one of the easiest ways, and it's free for people that um, really care about nurses or wanted to write a letter or just say, you know, we see you, keep working hard, thank you for all you're doing, and we include these notes with the free gifts, and it's one of my favorite things that we do, and 
We've received so many videos, letters, emails of people telling us, you know, charge nurses are copying these notes and hanging them up and just really showing their staff how much they are appreciated. And I think it's difficult for nurses because when people are in the hospital, it's more than likely, or, you know, a doctor's office, not a good time, right? But I think outside in the world, people do care for nurses so deeply and appreciate them. Nurses just don't always feel that when you're in, you know, at work. So this is a great way that you can tell a story about a nurse that's touched you, um, share just your gratitude and appreciation and, and all the details are on our website there, but we can email them if you don't even want to physically mail them. We've had teachers have their students write in letters. It's really, really magical. Yeah, a few different ways. You can send an email to inspire a nurse at nursesinspirenurses.com. You can mail a note to Nurses Inspire Nurses at 15087 Northville Road in Plymouth, Michigan, the zip code 48170, or buy a gift from their Amazon wish list that will go to one of these nurses that they serve. All that information can be found on nursesinspirenurses.com by clicking on their Inspire a Nurse link at the top of the page, nursesinspirenurses.com. We're joined by the founder of Nurses Inspire Nurses, Kat Golden, on the Michigan Megacast. Kat, there's another uh, great fun event that it kind of goes back to the origins of, of this organization. Uh, that is coming up very soon. July 18th, you will be holding uh, Nurses Give Back Night. Is and the theme of 2022 is Inspiration Land. July 18th, tell us about this event and how nurses can participate if they haven't already signed up to do so. Oh my goodness, if you're a nurse and you have not signed up for this, this party, <laughs> you're going to want to. This is how I started uh, Nurses Inspire Nurses with our annual Nurse Give Back Night. And Really, I just want nurses to feel celebrated and appreciated for the hard work that we do every single day. And so we have a ton of local vendors all coming to the Eastern in Eastern Market in Detroit on July 18th. And you get, you know, a couple of drinks. We're having two amazing food trucks there, food and just a ton of fun. Uh, City Hop is doing a silent disco. Uh, Simplified is our screen printer. They're doing live printing. Um, I have a, a dancing robot, disco ball head girls. Um, we're having a 360 photo booth, cotton candy from Spun Sugar Detroit, lots of vendors. Um, and really the swag bags are gonna be very, very epic. And then just a ton of giveaways. So stethoscopes, shoes, um, gift cards, just tons of giveaways you can enter. And really just to connect with other nurses and be and be celebrated. Nurses aren't celebrated and appreciated enough, so so we're gonna do it. More information can be found on nurses inspiring nurses inspire nurses.com. That's nurses inspire nurses.com. Monday, July 18th uh, is this event at Eastern Market in Detroit. Uh, yeah. More information, of course, can be found on nurses inspire nurses. Dot com. Here are the ticket prices. A companion ticket, $30. Nurse give back night entry ticket, $45. And then, uh, unfortunately, their VIP happy hour tickets are sold out, but there's always going to be next year. Again, nursesinspirenurses.com. Kat, uh, a few more minutes with you before we'll say goodbye today. What are some other ways that people can support Nurses Inspire Nurses and, and help your organization provide these services and provide these supports to our frontline workers? Yeah, thank you for asking. I would say, you know, one, just anyone watching, if you know a nurse or have nurses in your life, tell them about us and let them know that there is support out there that is free. Um, it was always my goal that a nurse could interact with us and literally change their life. It doesn't cost them a dollar. We have so many free resources, our free app, and we're just there to support. So just getting the word out about what we're doing. And then second, I would say, especially any local business owners, or if you're looking to partner and maybe use some of your marketing dollars um, to promote your business, we love to do that. And we kind of do that through our Inspire a Nurse program. We're always looking for new businesses with to partner with on products or services, um, sponsorship relationship, just to, you know, support nurses in a bigger way. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on and uh, telling us more about, the, about this. Anything else today before we, uh, we haven't discussed that you'd like to say or we should be uh, keeping an eye out for from your organization? No, we covered it. This was great. And thank you so much for having me. And I hope I, hope I get to meet some new faces on July 18th. Absolutely. July 18th, Monday, July 18th at Eastern Market is their Nurse Give Back Night Celebration. Inspiration Land is the theme for this year. Kat, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.
You can find more information on Nurses Inspire Nurses, including their Inspire Nurse link and to get tickets to their special events on Monday, July 18th by visiting nursesinspirenurses.com. We're going to take a break on the MegaCast. When we come back, we'll talk jobs with Ryan Hunt of the Michigan Works Association coming up on the Michigan MegaCast. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Welcome back to the Michigan Megacast. I'm Tyler Keats. You can learn more about the program by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com and clicking on the Megacast link where you'll learn more about our live daily one-hour program about all things Michigan. That is the Michigan Megacast. Well, as the COVID-19 pan pandemic continues to evolve and employers are looking to fill jobs all across the state of Michigan. It's important to understand what organizations in Michigan are doing to help support those job seekers, but also those businesses that are looking for uh, finding those looking for available work in a skilled workforce. Joining us now is the Chief Executive Officer of the Michigan Works Association, Ryan Hunt on the Michigan Megacast. Ryan, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Tyler. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Hey, good to have you with us as well. So uh, let's start off, for those that may be unfamiliar, can you tell us what the Michigan Works Association is and what it does to help workforce development in the state of Michigan, but also uh, to help and advocate for workers in the state of Michigan? Absolutely, yeah. So the Michigan Works Association, we are a nonprofit based in Lansing, and you may have heard of the Michigan Works system in Michigan. Hopefully many of the viewers today are familiar with their local Michigan Works office. There are 16 Michigan Works agencies throughout the state of Michigan, strategically located throughout all corners of the state. Those 16 Michigan Works agencies have 66 service centers and 33 one-stop centers uh, that are all physical locations throughout the state. And those facilities and the staff that are there in those buildings are there to serve both job seekers in our communities and employers who are looking to hire individuals uh, each day uh, in a range of industries, a range of occupations. So if you're looking for uh, job seeker support or if you're an employer looking to make some hires in your local community, the Michigan Works Office, you can really think of it as an extension of your HR team uh, there to support the, the hiring and the employability skills and the upskilling of our workforce here in the state of Michigan. And so the Michigan Works Association represents those 16 Michigan Works offices across the state and we do that in three key buckets. The first bucket is primarily legislative advocacy at the federal and the state level. We recognize that workforce development is going to be a key component in ensuring that the state of Michigan remains on the right track toward long-term economic resiliency, especially as we hopefully start coming out of the pandemic a little bit more here in the coming months. Uh, we also focus on professional development. We host a number of workshops and training sessions for frontline 
Michigan Works staff at each of those 16 agencies across the state on an annual basis. We have a few that are actually going on uh, this week. And then we also focus on raising the visibility of the workforce system in Michigan, and we do so through a number of key events throughout the year. We just had our annual impact awards in Lansing in late March, uh, just a few weeks ago, where we had a winner from each of the 16 Michigan Works agencies. Some of them were employers, some of them were employees of companies in our communities, some were job seekers or, or community partners. And so through those efforts and awarding and recognizing those individual contributors to our economy, we're raising the visibility of all the things that our workforce system here in Michigan can accomplish through the Michigan Works system. And then we also have our annual conference coming up September 11th through the 13th at Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort in Mount Pleasant. That'll be our first in-person annual conference in over two years. So Ryan, at this moment in time, given that, as you said, we're starting to, especially economically, uh, come out from the throes of the pandemic and socially and societally in Michigan and the U.S. across the world, we're seeing things sort of transition away from pandemic era behaviors and pandemic era precautions as of now uh, and that could change but at, at this moment in time where is michigan economically and especially with the job market in, in terms of availability in terms of what is open and in, in terms of what's being looked for in an employee by many of the companies that have these job openings yep great question uh, there's some good news and some bad news, right? Uh, the good news is Michigan's economic recovery from the pandemic continues to, I think, exceed expectations for many of us um, who have, have been living through and working with both employers and job seekers the last couple of years just to keep them engaged in the economy, make sure that the businesses have the right folks to hire, but also the job seekers have the right skills and the right resources to get into positions that are of higher wage quality, maybe an opportunity for them to continue upskilling themselves and, and being able to uh, raise a family and support themselves in their community. So the good news is, again, the economy in Michigan continues to rebound quite extraordinarily. Uh, the bad news, however, is here in Michigan, we have a lower than average labor force participation rate when you look across the national economy right now. And that's due to a, a number of factors. Um, right here in Michigan, for example, the uh, hospitality industry that was one of the hardest hit industries in Michigan. And when you compare that to the hospitality industry across the entire nation, Michigan saw a rather dramatic effect in a negative fashion as a result of the pandemic, especially early on, you know, in the spring and summer months of 2020. That has continued to rebound. However, uh, we, are we are still seeing uh, a number of job openings in some of those areas in the hospitality industry in Michigan. And you know, uh, just as well as anybody, Tyler, we rely heavily on our tourism industry, not just in the summer months with uh, beautiful northern Michigan. If you go to you know Traverse City or Alpena and you enjoy the, the beaches uh, and the wonderful tourist destinations, but it's really a year round tourist attraction for individuals, not just in the US, but, but globally as well. So we're doing all that we can to help support those workers in the hospitality industry and working with other partners like at the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association to help out uh, with that industry. Uh, so the more that we can do to help increase the labor force participation rates in Michigan, you know, we're happy to partner with other uh, public stakeholders like the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity and also private stakeholders and companies to ensure that when they're looking for eligible qualified workers, they have the right resources in place. Maybe there's some federal or some state assistance they can tap into to help uh, hire uh, different populations, such as those who may have been previously incarcerated that are now returning to work, maybe individuals with disabilities, just kept trying to overturn um, any leap that they can uh, in order to find that qualified talent here in Michigan in order to raise those labor force participation rates. We're joined by Ryan Hunt, the Chief Executive Officer of the Michigan Works Association, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. More information on their website, michiganworks.org. That's michiganworks.org. Uh, for those who aren't qualified for certain jobs, uh, what do you recommend to, to become more skilled at, or to put themselves in a more advantageous position to acquire some of these open jobs that they may be seeking at this time, if, whether they are currently at another job and continue to labor at that job or are out, out of the job market at, at this point, maybe on unemployment or, how, or an expired unemployment? Great question. What we're seeing right now, and this is not just here in Michigan, this is really nationally and in, in many cases globally, um, especially in some of our, our competing uh, countries across the uh, across the entire world. 
Uh, it's, it's going to take a more educated, more qualified, better skilled workforce in order for us to compete in a 21st century global economy, especially in some of the driving industries like advanced manufacturing and technology. We're the state that put the world on wheels. And in order for us to continue maximizing our potential and winning the future in many of these driving industries, we know that we need folks who have more than just a high school diploma. We need people with post-secondary credentials. It may not necessarily be a associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, but we need folks with the right credentials and the right certifications in order for Michigan to remain globally competitive uh, and, and globally relevant for that matter. And so you may have heard of Governor Whitmer's 60 by 30 initiative. And the goal there is by 2030, 60% of working age adults in Michigan to have some type of post-secondary degree or credential. And what we're seeing, if you look at the state's top 50 hot jobs through 2028, the bulk of those jobs are going to require some type of post-secondary credential or post-secondary degree. And so what we're encouraging individuals is to contact their local Michigan Works office in their community. You can get hooked up with uh, a number of individuals who are the frontline staff there and day in and day out, they're helping to serve as career coaches for job seekers and helping them align their passions and their interests with in-demand jobs of the future uh, by upskilling themselves, looking for not only uh, you know the technical skills that individuals need, but also the employability skills or what's oftentimes referenced as soft skills. You think of time management, the ability to work in a team environment. Those are critical skills right now that I can help set individuals apart from the rest of the competition if they're looking for new employment opportunities. And again, by engaging with their local Michigan Works office, there's a number of resources that individuals can tap into that can help offset the cost or maybe even eliminate the cost altogether for upskilling opportunities. On the other side of that coin, you have these employers that are looking to fill a lot of these jobs. In some cases, they have a, a mass of openings in their companies, uh, in, in certain departments of their company, certainly in certain industries, uh, like you had said, uh, you mentioned hospitality in particular is really hurting for employees at this time. You were quoted recently in a Detroit Free Press article uh, that focused on that the so-called great resignation, uh, w particularly focusing on restaurant workers, those in hospitality, restaurant, uh, restaurant workers, uh, uh, those working in hotels, and so on, and, and which you referred to to the, that situation as the quote great upgrade, not great resignation. What do you mean by that, and how does that context play into what employers should be focusing on at this point to fill some of those job openings, yep. given the current state of our market? Sure. Yeah, when I mentioned the, the great upgrade, you know, we've heard the, the phrase over the last couple of years, the great resignation. And I think when people hear that, they think people are just sitting on the sidelines, not willing to re-engage in the economy. It's primarily impacting uh, mid, mid, it, middle income to higher income, white collar workers who are now resigning their positions and you know either not re-engaging the economy or being very cautious about what they're going to do for the next career opportunity. What we're seeing in the information from here in Michigan and across the country is it's really, uh, really should be a, a great, up, the great upgrade is what it probably should be called because that uh, that dynamic is more uh, more heavily impacting lower wage workers who may be looking for the next opportunity and they may be leaving for a job that pays you know fifty cents an hour more or a dollar hour and a more down the street. Uh, or they're looking for opportunities to re-engage in the economy in a different occupation in a different industry entirely. You know, we've seen individuals that are leaving certain industries uh, here in Michigan and across the U.S. and and they're pursuing industries or occupations that are more in demand that lead to higher wage, uh, higher skilled positions. Uh, and so, what we're doing right now in in coordination with our Michigan Works agencies and our private sector audience. Uh, throughout the state of Michigan is we're encouraging companies uh, to look at ways that they can help either retain and or attract new employees uh, into their company. And some of the ways that they can do that is by enhancing the corporate culture within their company, not just focusing on increasing wages. We have seen wages increase quite a bit uh, through the course of the pandemic, especially in uh, certain industries like the hospitality industry. 
Uh, but there's only so much that a private sector company can do to increase wages before that really starts to eat into their bottom line. But there are many other things that they can do in order to help enhance that corporate culture. Part of it, we've talked a little today about upskilling and training. You know, individuals and workers are looking for companies that are interested in not just having them come in and do the job nine to five, but they want a company that's going to make that recurring investment in their professional development. So upskilling and training is a great way for companies to uh, show that return on investment for the individual workers that they have at their company. Uh, we're also seeing that uh, cross uh, cross training and, and job shadowing into different departments or different areas of a company can also help lead to long term retention of employees, especially if you have a company who's starting at you know maybe the ground level on the production floor, but they want to move into a management position. Are there things that the company can be doing in the near term to help individuals get into some type of management track, whether that's in-house training or taking some courses at the local community college that are geared toward what the individual wants to do long term? So the better uh, the better long term outlook. Uh, the companies have in investing in their employees. We're seeing those companies are having better retention and attraction rates compared to their counterparts who may not be investing as much in those upskilling opportunities for their employees. We're joined by Ryan Hunt, the Chief Executive Officer of Michigan Works Association. Joining us on the Michigan Megacast. More information at michiganworks.org. That's michiganworks.org. How does inflation play into the job, job market at, at this time for, employer, for employers? I would I would imagine that means a lot higher card uh, a lot higher costs, which means a lot less uh, cash flow, lower revenue, less money to spend, particularly on employment. Which then, for employees looking to seek these jobs, they may have better opportunities. They may have well, they may they may have opportunities for better pay in a similar position that's maybe a little bit lower in a company somewhere else than with certain companies. So just overall, what role has inflation played? in this and how long do you project or does Michigan Works project this could have an impact on employers and therefore uh, potential employees? Man, that is that is a great question. I do not pretend to be an economist and I did not sleep at a holiday in last night, uh, but I'll do my best to answer those questions for you, at least what we're seeing right now and, and kind of what we're hearing from some of our subject matter experts on the, on the topic of inflation. Um, consumer demand has not slowed down. So even though we're seeing uh, inflation and the rising cost of goods and services across the board, uh, not only for you know individual families to afford the basic necessities, but also for you know cost of goods and services for businesses to be able to do their jobs and for workers to be able to do their jobs. That consumer demand is helping to um, kind of offset some of the uh, some of the inflationary dynamics that you may typically see ahead of perhaps a, a slight or deep recession. Uh, in a state or national economy. But because of that consumer demand, companies are still hiring. We're not seeing really any slowdown in the job market right now. We're still having a number of uh, companies in, in a range of industries that are continuously hiring, looking for that next best and brightest talent. Uh, and for workers as well, that inflation has led to an increase in wages, which you would think is oftentimes a good thing for wages to be able to increase. The problem that we're running into now that we're seeing uh, here in the US and across the globe is inflation is actually rising faster than, than wage increases are. But now we're also running into the dynamic where companies who have been raising their wages for the last couple of years cannot afford to raise their wages much more without cutting into that bottom line. So what the future holds for us here in Michigan and across the national economy, I think is yet to be seen. Uh, because of that consumer demand, I think we'll see that uh, inflation will continue, maybe not at the level of 8.5% like we saw in March. I know some economists are projecting that the inflation will uh, start to perhaps dip a little bit, uh, which will provide hopefully some relief for the cost of basic goods and necessities for uh, individuals and their families. The other dynamic we have to think about as well, you know, we, we had a recession back in you know, 2007, 2008, 2009. Michigan was one of the states that was hit hardest. Uh, across the entire nation when it came to uh, the Great Recession a little over a decade ago. I think the difference in dynamics this time around is the the job uh, shortages uh, that companies are running into where they have a shortage of workers, but they have a number of different job openings. And we've seen over the course of the pandemic uh, quite a few, you know, millions of people that have retired um, and maybe expedited their retirement because of the pandemic. And we're not expecting those individuals to re-engage in the economy. So even if we do see a slight slowdown 
um, in the hiring of employees. Maybe it's just simply that companies won't hire as many people as they would have necessarily projected due to any particular slowdown. That also may just be the optimist in me, but I'm hopeful that you know, as a nation and as a state, we can weather um, any storm that is uh, coming due because of the inflationary dynamic. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're here to support the job seekers in, in order to upskill themselves to better support their individual lives and their families. We're also here to support the businesses who are looking to hire those individuals as well, uh, whether, you know, regardless of the inflation rate right now. But I, I know that we're we're tracking that very carefully, and I know that it will have a significant impact probably in the medium term, I would say, here in Michigan. Not necessarily any short-term fixes, uh, and I would, I'm scared to make any long-term projections, but I would say inflation is certainly here to serve as a dynamic impacting uh, labor force participation here in Michigan and nationally, probably uh, you know at least for the next several months, if not longer. Ryan, anything else that we should be keeping in mind right now in terms of Michigan Works opportunity to help employers and employees alike? Sure. Uh, again, I mentioned this at the very beginning of the interview today. Workforce development is a critical component to ensuring that Michigan remains on the track toward long-term economic resiliency. We're starting to get into budget discussions here in Michigan for fiscal year 23, also talking with uh, federal lawmakers about appropriations for uh, the upcoming fiscal year as it relates to workforce development. Again, we encourage both job seekers and companies to communicate and contact their local Michigan Works office. There are a number of different resources and opportunities to help offset the cost of training, perhaps even eliminate or lower some barriers that individuals may be running into when it comes to uh, sustained employability. One program that we've had a huge amount of success over the past you know, six or seven years here in Michigan is the Going Pro Talent Fund, formerly known as the Skilled Trades Training Fund. Um, that program last year in fiscal year 22 was funded at $40 million throughout the state of Michigan. That program helps companies offset the cost of training. They can receive a reimbursement of up to $1,500 per eligible trainee or up to $3,000 per new apprentice at their company. And we expect to continue supporting that program in fiscal year 23 and beyond thanks to the support. It's actually really a bipartisan support, not only from the governor's office, but on both sides of the aisle in the state house and the state senate and so for companies again that's just another re resource that they can utilize to help upskill their employees and really help enrich the corporate culture at their company to reinvest in their workers ryan thank you so much for joining us thank you appreciate having you on ryan hunt the ceo of the michigan works association with us on the michigan megacast we'll take one more break on the megacast when we come back we'll talk with dr barry franklin from oakland university's william beaumont school of medicine he's also an author and recently wrote gps for success we'll talk to him about that up next on the michigan megacast can i ask you a question uh, why do you want to get the covid19 vaccine i don't like getting sick the virus will die it will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. 
Call 855 Voices 4 or text 1 866 238 1454 for help. Learn more at Michigan.gov slash Voices 4. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Welcome back to the Michigan Megacast. I'm Tyler Keith. To learn more about the program on our website at civiccentertv.com slash megacast where you'll find all the information you need to know about our daily one-hour live program about all things Michigan. Joining us now on the show is Dr. Barry Franklin. He is a doctor and a professor with the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. He's also an author recently writing GPS for Success, his first book. Dr. Franklin, thanks for being with us today. Tyler, pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have you with us. Uh, so first off, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, and then your journey to authoring this book, GPS for Success, uh, Skills, Strategies, and Secrets of Super Achievers. Sure. I, I was a gymnast in undergraduate school. I went to Kent State University, Tyler, and my goals were really twofold. What new trick I was going to learn on the still rings and which attractive co-ed I was going to take out on Saturday night. And I came to the sobering realization that those goals weren't going to lead to a meaningful career or, for that matter, pay the bills. I got a bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D., Ph.D. from Penn State University, got it out into the real world and realized I was not as prepared as I thought I was going to be. Uh, then I started reading everything I could on leadership, success, and early in my career, I embraced Peter Drucker, the management guru's recommendation that everybody should find a secondary pursuit and make it into more than just a, ha a hobby. For me, that secondary pursuit became the study of highly successful people in all walks of life. And for the last four decades, it's really been a passion of mine and finally put it together in this new book, GPS for Success. And so you even taught an entire course on this at Central Michigan. Can you tell us about the basics of GPS for Success uh, and where the titling comes from on this book? Yeah, the, the basics are really to fill a void in the standard secondary prevention or secondary uh, education curriculum. The American Council on Education says we need to do a better job in equipping students with broad uh, life and career skills. They talk about these underappreciated soft skills, and the things we address in the book are positive associations, in other words, surrounding yourself with people you want to emulate, collaboration. Uh, there's a synergy when two people with complementary skills work together. They can do a lot more. People skills, very, very important. The reason people are largely hired for jobs and, and are promoted is people skills, not technical skills. Uh, interviewing, the ability to interview and get a job. Uh, problem solving, goal setting, very, very important. Uh, I love the quotes, unless it's on paper, it's vapor. Uh, or uh, if you can think it, ink it, so to speak. Uh, ask for things you want. Very highly successful people in our research ask for things they wanted. Serve others, focus on your contributions. And there's a boomerang effect that comes back to you. Uh, dealing with setbacks. I oftentimes tell young people, college students, setbacks line the road to success. If you're experiencing setbacks, you know you're on the right road. The patience of virtue, uh, persistence and patience. The potency of preparedness. Every time I give a talk, and I'm sure you do for your radio uh, and, and podcasts, uh, you prepare. You, you look at what you got to do. Uh, the keys to writing and speaking. Uh, also, uh, organizational membership. I got a great deal out of being a member of several different professional organizations. And the number one factor, taking action. Uh, uh, Tommy Hopkins, a top sales leader in the world, has what he calls the law of Goya. Get off your ass and move in the direction of stuff that you want. It is so true. Uh, the famous, famous author, Art Williams, said it's not what you say you're going to do in life, it's what you actually do. So this book addresses many, many of those issues. And so when you mentioned some of these soft skills that are critical to finding success in, in life, whatever that definition is for you, or whatever those goals are that you're setting, what are some of those skills that you believe that 
young men and women that are entering their careers now that or even those that are established in their careers but are hitting kind of a standstill what do you believe among those soft skills and among those major skills that are critical to success that these people may be missing and could be useful to them to read something like gps for success and learn some of those skills well, some of the key books that i read over the years that i'd highly recommend beyond uh, academics are the secret by rhonda Byrne, how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, and our new book, GPS for Success, Skills, Strategies, and Secrets of Super Achievers. You said to me, Barry, give me the foundational factors. I think there are four. Basically, number one, if you want to do great work, you got to love what you do. So find out what you love to do and get somebody to pay you to do it. Uh, Steve Jobs said the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Secondly, recognize that to a large extent, we make our own destiny. I read a great book by Mark Myers years ago called How to Make Luck. And what he says, and I think it's very true, is 95% of the things that happen to you, Tyler, happen because of things you did or didn't do. Uh, number three, take 100% responsibility for your life. Those people who take 100% responsibility are invariably the super achievers. Student one time came up to me and said, Dr. Franklin, you know the 10 most powerful two letter words. And I said, I didn't. And she said, if it is to be, it is up to me. And I think that is so, so true. And finally, focus on serving others. A lot of young people worry about making a big salary and a house and, and travel and so on and so forth. And I say you're focusing on the wrong end of the scale. Focus on your contributions and the rewards will come. I love the quote by Tolstoy who once said, we love people not for what they can do for us, but for what we can do for them. It's the fundamental ingredient of success. And then if you were to say to me, well, give me some more specifics, let me give you my top 10 if we've got the time. Yeah, can I do that? Okay. Number one, look for the good in people and situations. Tyler, if I'm interviewing you and I ask, how's Oakland University or how's your current, per, current job? And you say, well, it's really lousy. They aren't good. The interview's over. I don't want you. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you say, I love where I'm at, but moving to Belmont or whatever can take my career to a new step. Focus number two on the law of attraction. Believe, act, and achieve. Believe, take action, and achieve. Number three, program your GPS. In other words, set goals in writing. Uh, number four, take action, just do it. As I said, Tommy Hopkins said the law of Goya, get off your butt and move in the direction of your goals. Number five, recognize that setbacks line the road to success and that persistence pays. Uh, this latest book that we're talking about, Tyler, I wanna say it quietly, but I got turned down by 100 publishers before a small publisher in a small city, you may have heard of it, called New York, New York. Productivity Press said, we'll publish your book. So never, never give up. Number six, ask for things you want. Reject rejection. You want to get on a committee, you want to do this, do the, call the people and say you're interested in volunteering, you're interested in helping out. I can't, can't tell you the number of successful people I've talked to. I said, how'd you get on that committee? They said, I called the person in charge and asked. Number seven, become a master communicator. There are good data to suggest the bigger your vocabulary, the better speaker you are, the better writer you are, the better you're gonna move in your career. The greater number of words you know, the more likely you are to be highly successful. Number eight, power of associations and collaborations. I tell young people, find out the stars in the field and if you can work with them, either, even just an internship at no salary, it's priceless experience. Surround yourself with stars. I've been above my 37 years and have surrounded myself with people who have skills and abilities I don't have and they make me look good. And I thank them wholeheartedly. Um, you wanna double or triple your productivity, work with others. That book you mentioned is my 27th book. It took the longest ever to write it, almost four years. Many of my other books were with two or three other people where you take a book this thick and you only have to do this much work, a third, if you're doing it with other people. So it's tougher to do things on your own. Um, one other thing, and there's a great analogy, I always watch the, the Budweiser commercials around Christmas time, you see those big Clydesdales. What many people don't realize, Tyler, is that one Clydesdale can pull 8,000 pounds. You take two Clydesdales, put them together, it's not 16,000 pounds, it's 24,000 pounds. And two Clydesdales working together who've been trained to move together simultaneously 
can pull 32,000 pounds, four times the weight of any one. People are the same way. People working together can accomplish phenomenal things. Number nine, people skills. Uh, the main reason people advance in their careers is they've got good people skills. Uh, they take an interest in others. Um, they're people of integrity. In other words, doing what you say you're gonna do. Uh, they make people feel important. Danny Myers, the uh, owner of Shake Shack, was interviewed and said, Mr. Myers, what do you, how, do you, how have you been so successful? You're worth half a billion dollars. He said, every person I see, I pretend they have a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. Uh, try to exceed people's expectations. And finally, the law of sow and reap, be willing to pay the price. I had a student from Oakland University looked at my uh, edits on something she asked me to look at, and she said, wow, you made this sound so much better. How often are you doing this writing and this editing? You must have some experience. I said, only on the days I eat. That seemed to get the message across to her that, yeah, you gotta spend a lot of time. In fact, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, writer of Outliers, said you gotta devote 10,000 hours on something before you really become a good broadcaster, a good writer, a good speaker, whatever. Last but not least, uh, it pays to be just a little bit better. And I tell students this, if you're thinking about the master's, stop thinking about it and take action and get that master's, get the certification and so on and so forth. 2002, I started looking at the PGA Tour, Professional Golf Association Tour. Number one golfer in the world, Tyler, was a guy by the name of Tiger Woods. You may have heard of him. Averaged 68.56 shots. And number 10 golfer in the world that year was Sergio Garcia. He averaged 70 shots. What does that mean? It means Tiger Woods number one would beat the number 10 golfer by an average 1.5 shots it pays to be a little bit better it's as simple as that by by the way as an aside tiger woods made 6.6 .6 million on a tour that year uh, sergio garcia 10 million uh, i'm sorry 2 million so 6.6 .6 versus 2 million but the comp there was a company in 2002 you may have heard of them called nike mm -hmm. who, gave, who gave tiger woods a 60 to 80 million dollar contract because he was the number one golfer. I tell students and young colleagues, anything you can do to make yourself a little bit better, do it. Those are the keys. We're joined by Dr. Barry Franklin from Oakland University's William Beaumont School of Medicine. He's also the author of GPS for Success, Skills, Strategies, and Secrets of Super Achievers, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. Dr. Franklin, this book is great for, for anybody. These strategies can be used for anybody at any level of, of life, at any level of their career, whatever career field they're in, but specifically for those who are just graduating, whether it be high school and moving on to college or a trade or some other venture in their life, or those graduating college or just looking for a change in their life for those groups of people why is this book something that can be a very very helpful tool for them as they are reshifting their journey or forming their journey at its early point yeah it's a great question in many respects i could have named this book tyler the missing course because for the most part we talked, I was in physiology, we got a lot on heart rate and energy metabolism and caloric expenditure, but we didn't get much on interpersonal skills and collaboration and goal setting and creating a synergy via collaboration and so on and so forth. So in many respects, this course fills a missing void. Uh, one of the few courses I taught was at Central Michigan University and I taught this course over a five year period it was a one credit course. It was on a Friday and Saturday and the students invariably rated it among the highest rated courses around. I'll also say I'm very proud of the fact that uh, uh, President Peskovitz took an early look at the, the book and gave us a, a, a glowing recommendation. So those are things I'm particularly proud of and, and we hope that this can be a useful resource for students. It, it, to me, it's the perfect graduation gift to be quite frank with you. Dr. Franklin, if people are interested in, in reading the book, they're interested in purchasing the book, where are some of the places that they can find GPS for success? Probably the easiest thing, Tyler, is to simply go to my website. Uh, my website is all lowercase, www.drbarryfranklin.com. And there's information on GPS for success. There's information on the student comments from Central when they took the course. And there's information, there's three different options for ordering the book. The best is a company called Healthy Learning out in California who bought a bulk order and is selling them at a discounted rate. 
Dr. Franklin, but before we let you go, in another couple minutes or left uh, before we'll have to say goodbye today. At this time, uh, after all this knowledge you've col collected, after all the studying you've done of successful people in a variety of different fields, at this time, what is your number one piece of advice for anybody at any level of life that's looking to achieve a goal or to uh, achieve a certain level of success, whatever that is defined for them, your number one tip among all things you've learned that they need to be following in their life, that they need to change in their life today to achieve that success? I think the, uh, the key thing is the take home message that I saw Tyler on a car bumper sticker that said, you are your own fortune cookie. Uh, to a large extent, you make your destiny. Don't blame the professor, don't blame the administrator, don't blame the manager or the director. You got to find the right path. And if you're persistent, if you're positive in your interactions with other people, uh, if you, you read and follow what we have in this book, I think you'll be eminently successful. Dr. Franklin, thank you so much for joining us. Tyler, pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. More information on Dr. Barry Franklin's book, GPS for Success, can be found on his website, drbarryfranklin.com. That is going to do it for today's edition of the MegaCast. I want to thank everybody that joined us on this edition of the program from Katie Jones, one of the artists you'll find at this year's Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, Jody Richmond from JVS and Kadima, or Jesher Family Services. Of course, uh, Kat Golden from Nurses Inspire Nurses, Ryan Hunt from the Michigan Works Association, and of course, Dr. Barry Franklin. You can find all their interviews on our website. CivicCenterTV.com, where you can find more information on all of our partnering stations as well on our Megacast page. And keep up to date on everything you need to know about COVID-19 and other stories making headlines across the Great Lakes State on our Megacast page, CivicCenterTV.com slash Megacast, where you'll find everything you need to know on the Oakland County and the Michigan Megacast, so you can join us live 10 a.m. until 12 noon each and every day, as well as live to tape on some of our network as well. All that information, civiccentertv.com slash megacast. Want to give a big thank you as well to our entire crew that makes this program possible each and every day. Our Zoom producer and our technical director uh, out at the My Michigan TV offices, Jared Clark and Calvin Brown, uh, with us for the full program each and every day. And of course, the king of television himself, Larry Nyland, our producer, booking all of our guests and helping them and us be ready for informative conversations on a number of different topics each and every day. On My Michigan TV, coming up next, it's Steve Lato live from 12 noon to 1 p.m., followed by Larry and Ronnie live. And then we will return tomorrow with brand new editions of both the Oakland County and the Michigan Megacasts.